Hi, I'm Phil Susan and welcome back to my channel where I am going to show you uh, another in the exciting series of how I played bass lines on various different tracks. Um, this particular uh, time I'm going to show you something which uh, due to very popular demand I've been asked many times how do I play the bass line on Shot in the Dark. So I'm going to show you that song. I'm going to go through some of the uh, unique stuff and uh, I think what I'll do first is I'll play along to the track so you can hear it and then we'll go through and we'll pick it apart and go through the different sections and show you what I was doing. But first, a little bit of information about the sound and about the recording. So Shot in the Dark was obviously an Ozzy Osbourne uh, single that was recorded on the album The Ultimate Sin that was released in 1986. It was recorded at the Townhouse Studios, which was uh, just off of Shepherd's Bush. I don't think it's there anymore. Um, and when I recorded it, I was using a passive bass. As I recall, it was a Yamaha BB3000. I remember that because, uh, quite coincidentally, it's Jimmy Bain's bass of choice. I think he used one of those throughout uh, most of his career. But uh, quite coincidental. Um, I went, at the time I was playing Marshall amps, so it went through a Marshall uh, 900 series, which were rack mounted amps. They were terrific. They never really, uh, I, I don't think they make them anymore, and I don't think they really focused that much on their, on their base equipment, certainly not in the United States. I might be wrong about this, but I did play Marshall for a long time, until the late 80s, when I switched to Ampeg, and I've been with Ampeg ever since, and I absolutely love Ampeg. In fact, here in the studio, um, using this uh, Ampeg Portaflex, which is a 20 watt Ampeg SVT. It has a full fledged SVT preamp and it has a much smaller stage tube power amp. And the output of that is going into this fantastic device that's made by a company called Two Notes and it is called the Torpedo Captor. It is a speaker emulator. You can take the output of any amp and put it in there and then you can select from any one of hundreds of different cabinets and you can put microphones in front of those cabinets and you can move them around and you can adjust them exactly and, and you can get a level of consistency and this thing sounds absolutely tremendous sounds terrific sounds like the best recorded cabinet that you've ever <laughs> recorded so if you're not hip to this you should check it out it's a lot of great people are, are getting turned on to this so I did use a passive bass at the time to record the song. This is an active bass. This is a Music Man um, uh, Sterling, which is my live bass of choice. I've been using for a couple of decades now. But they sound similar. Maybe a little bit more high frequencies than the active bass. But at the end of the day, they're both basses. Same. Four strings. <laughs> so, so this is what we'll be using to go through the song today. Here we go.
there we go. Shot in the dark. So, um, starting off uh, at the very beginning, the tuning of this of our instruments was down a half step. So from concert pitch, so effectively we were down to an E flat uh, tuning. So um, when this track was played, it was played in B, but because it was down a half step, that would be B flat. And the reason it was in B flat is that's how I wrote it. I wrote it on piano. It was a piano song. It wasn't written on guitar, so it had to be adapted. And so uh, that also explains why Jake had to have a unique tuning on his guitar. And there's information about that out there on, on the net, on the, the web, on the net or in books as well. Um, so right at the beginning, uh, it's basically got an eights feel to it. The first thing I can tell you is that um, uh, there are a couple of different ways to play eights. Um, obviously you can play them guitar style, which I consider to be all downbeats. And then some people will play downbeat alternating with an upbeat. Um, the downbeats are, you know, like that. And then down with the up would be, um, And I consider myself to be pretty good timing-wise when it comes down to doing that down and up picking, but I think you'll agree it's still not quite as effective as the downbeats go. Now, the problem I have with downbeats is uh, they do have a tendency to sound a little mechanical. And for that reason, I wanted to try to come up with something different. So I tend to use a mixture of different techniques just to give it some kind of vibe. So the three techniques that I use, of course, are the downbeats and the down and the upbeats. And then I'll use a technique which I don't see too many people doing, which is three downs and one up. So for example, I will go Now when I bring them together and I put them all together, I can end up with And you can get a little bit more of a vibe, a little bit more of a lope that goes through this. And this is something that I do all the time with all the other bands that I've worked with in the past where I have played um, a lot of eights. For example, when I was working with Billy Idol, we did a lot of stuff with eights. That's a characteristic of his music. And uh, we wanted to keep that eights feel, but do something that had, like I said, a, a lope to it or a little bit of a, a little bit of a vibe where you can slot some off beats in and uh, so that that's a that's that's a very cool thing to to, to, to work on um, the verses obviously they just go between the, the B and the G B and the G then we get into the B section or pre-chorus section which This I am. It's it's simply a major scale, but instead of going across two strings, I'm using that uh, uh, technique, which I I, I know Jack of Pistorius used to use a lot. That fingering, where he tends to cover, um, you know, a major third with his four fingers. So basically, he's. What's nice about that is you can encompass one octave plus a fifth, or if you like, a thirteenth, without having to move your hand around too much. It's really a, a powerful thing, and it also gives you a consistency of tone. It maintains some tension there, so that's a really great thing. The syncopation, of course. Continue the syncopation, uh, the offbeat uh, syncopation on the G climb up as well. And I'm hitting the accents too, I'm sure you can hear that. And then 
ending on a chord. You know, playing in a three-piece band, uh, the guitar player can always use that little extra chordal help whenever you can. So I like to throw in a lot of fifths and chords and stuff like that because it helps to, to fill in underneath uh, whatever else is going on. And then we get into the chorus. So, big slide down. Notice I'm not playing the B here on the E string. I'm not going. I'm actually playing it here so that it opens up and it rings. So it's. Because I want that chorus to really open up. I want it to go up a notch. And so it rings nicely down there on the open strings. And there are some details in there which, uh, which I play as well where, with, that I would try to mimic a lot of the drum parts that were going on. And uh, you'll hear that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a very cool little part. Um, I do play it all the time under there. A lot of people don't notice that I'm playing something like that, but it does add a lot to it. I'll slow it down for you. It's... So it's... Lots of hammer-ons and double stops. And that was the chorus. And then... Uh... The end of the chorus again, we hold another chord and go through another verse and then go through another chorus. That brings us to the middle section. The middle section. Simple. We're just going from D to C, D to C, and I'm just using a major triad, right? That's the pattern. doing here so we're going from the the chords of this of the solo which is uh, B goes to E to G but I'm playing the B when I hit the E I'm playing the major third and I do that a lot I think it's a great way to bring a melodic sense to uh, you know a rock song and keep a sort of a um, almost a pop sensibility about it. So um, you add that melody in there, and that's the, 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 the major third. So from the major third, instead of playing the E, I'm playing the G sharp. And then to go to G, I simply just drop it down a half a step. And then a little fill. And then repeats it. Right? We repeat the same part and then we go into the, the pre-chorus and then the very last choruses. We do that three times and then we go into the outro, which is very much like the intro. I'm just, just putting them fills in there that match the drums again, you know. Or just playing around with it. And that takes us to the end of the song. I think live we ended it on the riff. Uh, I actually, whenever I play with my solo band, I end it on the end of uh, the, uh, the chorus progression. And you can do either. 
Um, anyway, that's really how I played the song and some of the finer points of, of what I was doing on the bass to try to keep the, keep the melody in there, keep the, uh, the drive, keep the eights feel, but also have something that felt uh, more like a, uh, uh, a, a bit more of a pocket, a bit more of a groove that was going through it, because it is basically a very you know, upbeat sort of poppy song, so that's, that's kind of what gave it its characteristic. And uh, once again, I mean, just looking through some of these uh, techniques, I think the one thing to take away from this song is definitely the, definitely the mixture of the, the, the down strokes mixed with the down and up, mixed with the three down and one up strokes as far as it comes down to when you're playing eights and giving you a different way of playing those. I think that's really important. Anyway, I hope this has been uh, uh, interesting and educational. I am going to do more of these. I'm going to do some more Aussie tracks. And then I will move on to doing some uh, other tracks, probably with, uh, you know, I did a lot of uh, really cool things on the Luke album, the Steve Luke of the th uh, uh, solo album, as well as stuff that I did that was cool on uh, uh, maybe some of the Billy Idol stuff we might visit. And of course, the last in line stuff uh, as well. But in the meantime, I hope you had a great, uh, uh, this has been a great show for you. Please, please, please. Subscribe and like. We like subscription. Subscribe to the channel. Sub subscribe is good. Subscribe good, not subscribe, not so good. And uh, I will see you soon. Thank you again. Thanks again for watching. You take care.